Yoda. All right, guys. I am Wolf, the Lone Wolf, today, casting from Kangnam. I've got four awesome matches for you guys. We've got Ensnare versus Sazan. That match should be really interesting. It's two players who've kind of been around a long time. Everyone's been kind of wondering, are they going to disappear? Are they going to fall off the map? And, you know, I guess we're going to find out today how well they can fare against each other. It's cool that these guys are hitting each other here in this bracket. And, of course, we've got Genius versus Symbol. Symbol kind of a new guy here in uh, the round of 48, or round one of Code, code A. And uh, Genius, you know, he's been around a really, really long time, but he could fall out here because he's fallen down into Code A, and this is the danger day. So Genius could be out. He's our BlizzCon champion. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit worried for him because Symbol is a pretty awesome Zerg. I watched him practice at the TSL house. He's really strong, and I'm looking forward to see his, seeing his play here. Now, we've also got Hongan versus Lovesick. Lovesick, formerly known as OGSJ, uh, because Korean programmers like to change their IDs all the time. You really have to keep track of that. <laughs> so, Hongan is a player who's been around a really long time. He's been consistently in Code S. Both our new formats easier to fall into code A, and well, Hongen did just that last season, and it's easy for him to fall out now, and I don't know if Hongen's going to be able to stay in here. He's one of my favorite players. He's shown a lot of awesome timing attacks, a lot of good strategy, but also when he plays a long defensive game, he can play quite well as well, and I, I really have to say I think Hongen is the favorite in that match, but we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Lovesick has shown great play in the past. He's kind of bounced around. He's been in and out of code A. He's a pretty good player. And last but not least, we'll have Nada, the OGS Terran, the most consistent pro gamer of all time. He has a chance of falling all the way out of Code A today, so it's going to be a little bit scary for Nada. He's going to be playing against a new Slayers player, a player you guys know as Soccer. He was on the team We Made Fox. He's a Warcraft 3 player, played Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 for We Made Fox before it disbanded. Now he's using the ID Ven. Uh, I'll probably refer to him as Soccer to keep the uh, you know confusion down a little bit, but of course keep in mind Ven is not to be confused with OGS Finn, who's also playing today, uh, who used to be known as 4GG, so keep all those things in mind. I'm going to try to call him Soccer today to keep the confusion down. But uh, our players are pretty much ready to go here, we're in the lobby, and I think we'll be starting any moment now. Um, our first map is going to be, I believe, Calm Before the Storm. And we're going to have Calm Before the Storm, then Tall Dream Altar, and then Crossfire. So those are our three maps we've got lined up here. The countdown is about to start here. I hope you guys are as ready as I am. Our referee asking the players if they are ready. It's so good to be able to cast with you guys, even if I have to do it alone. It's been a long time since I've cast alone. I kind of missed it, but I love casting with the other Code A casters here at the GSL. And sometimes code S casters, of course. The countdown has started in Snare versus Sazan. This is game one. Down here at the bottom left, our red Terran player from the team OGS, a long time player in the GSL. This guy has been around forever. He is OGS in Snare, for it made it to the round of four in the first open season of GSL. His opponent has been around for almost as long. He's been he's played really well in the beta as well, and he is a member of the team OGS. Also, he's our Zerg player here at the top left. OGS is on. This guy is a player that many on OGS consider to be a top Zerg, even though he hasn't shown very many results. They use him a lot in Team League. They feel like his strategy, his decision-making is really strong. His macro, his mechanics, you know, not always the best, but his decision-making is really strong, and that's why a lot of people, uh, you know, like to hear. That's why the OGS coach likes to pull him out all the time. Of course, referring to OGS The Wind, who was once a pro gamer himself. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this map as we get this game started. Each spawning location has a backdoor expansion with how many mineral patches? Eight. The regular amount of mineral patches and two gases, two standard gases. So Calm Before the Storm, as its name suggests, is going to be a macro-oriented map. You're going to be able to take this backdoor expansion basically for free. In fact, we may even see Ensnare go for a command center first, as he's not yet sent out an SCV to make a barracks. He's got more SCVs rallied up here, so we are going to see a command center force from him first from him. 
Now, Sazan may decide to take his outside hatchery so he can start spreading that creep towards his opponent and then take this backdoor expansion later as kind of a free third. I think that's what we're going to see from him. And in fact, he is going to send a drone out to scout as he goes for that hatch first. And there is the command center first going down for Sazan. So, Sazan, or excuse me, for Ensnare. So, Ensnare is taking somewhat of a risky expansion. This isn't something you see on most maps, but on a map like this one, you can get away with it. You know, you get your barracks a little bit late, but as soon as you have that second command center up, you get two orbitals, you drop double mules, you get really far ahead. So this is a pretty, you know, common build to see on this map. It's almost crazy not to go for a command center first. Sometimes you'll see people hide two barracks or something like that, put some pressure on to catch a Zerg off guard, but it's much rarer. It's a much safer game to do it in Snare's done. And Snare is actually the fast expanding king back uh, in the open seasons of GSL. He was like Rainbow, he and Rainbow were trying to go like fast expand and TBT and, uh, you know, figuring that out, so. Pretty common to see Ensnare going for a fast expand like this. Of course, he's going to start powering up Barracks quite quickly as well, getting two now in his main base. Now, uh, Cezanne has actually gone for gas before pool, so he's already mining a little bit of gas in his main base, and uh, he's going to have that certain to speed up very quickly. Now, Cezanne's going to have a lot of different options from here. He's going to see what his opponent's doing pretty quickly. In fact, this drone scout's going to come up here, see the barracks, and know that there's no marine here. If it were a regular barracks timing, there would be a marine, so he knows, okay, you definitely did go command center first. I guess it's possible that you hit a barracks somewhere in the middle of the map, and this is your second barracks. That wouldn't make sense, because the second barracks would be finishing up right now. So he's going to know, okay, you went command center first. So now he has a couple of options. He's got that zergling speed going. He's continuing to mine with three harvesters on his extractor, so most likely he's going to draw off the baneling nest and be aggressive. He may also offer to go for roaches instead. And uh, you know, there's a lot of different pressures that Zergs can put on at this point. Come up here, put pressure on Ensnare, make him make a bunker, and then take a third base. Or he could potentially take a fast third at this point. He's droning up quite heavily right now, but in fact, uh, still mining from that extractor with three harvesters. Right now, Ensnare is actually going up to four barracks. It's one of the options you get when you go for this fast command center. You've got a tech lab ASAP here and just crank out marines that allows you to put a lot of pressure on your opponent it force your opponent to put down spine crawlers if he doesn't go for a bailing nest sometimes you can actually just end the game at that point so really cool decision making by ensnare to go for this four barracks play i think at these positions especially it's good for him but ensnare has seen everything you know he's seen this expansion out here on the outside there's a lot of larva stored up here it looks like he's going to make six drones there um He's seen everything, he knows that he took the external expansion rather than the backdoor one. The backdoor one is arguably safer, but this one, like I said, allows you to spread your creep towards your opponent earlier on. Spreading creep here is pretty easy to do. There's our bailing nest, so Cezanne may want to put on some early pressure. He may be doing this just as a possible defensive measure because that four barracks follow-up is so common. He does have Zerglings speed, so it's going to allow him to rally Zerglings forward very quickly if he wants to. You know, he doesn't have very many Zerglings out right now, in fact, only two, so I don't think he's going to put Baneling Aggression on. It's more of a de defensive move at this point to get that Baneling Nest. Now, Cezanne spreading his creep very aggressively here. I love that. Sending his queen down. He's got that third queen just going to continue to spread this creep and also ward off any intruders. He's continuing to use these Zerglings to scout around, but he's started 18 Zerglings in production, and that Baneling Nest is finishing up right now, so it looks like he's going to put on a little bit of aggression, and it's there only has marines right now his tech or uh, excuse me his combat shields are getting pretty close to being done they should be done in time for this to hit but it's not going to make too big of an impact he has no bunker if he gets these marines trapped out in the middle of the map while he's trying to put this pressure on and sazan catches them with speedlings and hits them with banelings he is going to be so far behind in fact right now sazan is taking that third base it's going to allow him a lot more economy just continuing to produce zerlings off of 35 drones right now 18 more zerlings in production that'll give him a total of about 40 Still has not produced any banelings yet, but he may catch these marines. The marines' combat shields are done. There are so many zerlings out, but he doesn't yet have any banelings in the snare. If he controls this just right, should be able to win this fight, but a nice flank by Sazan coming around the side here and actually going to catch all of these marines, cleaning them up quite easily, losing very little there. If you guys look at the units killed there, you can see fairly even number um, of workers killed, or excuse me, units killed. You can see the resources lost, though, much more for the snare. In fact, about double for Ensnare. Now, Cezanne is going to start putting that pressure on, and you know what? Ensnare is not made a bunker. He does have a factory here. He's got a starport going, even his command center finishing. 
but none of those things are good against Banelings. <laughs> you know, if you have a command center position right here, it's pretty good against Banelings, but we have only two supply depots here, that's not very good against Banelings. In fact, look at how many Banelings there is. 17 Banelings with 14 Zerlings making it home. He's gonna send the Zerlings up here, tanking a little bit of damage. He's coming up, going for both of these depots, and the Banelings rushing in here. Nice pullback by Ensnare, but a lot of these Zerlings doing tons of damage to the Marines at the front. Banelings kind of being wasted here, not hitting a ton, gonna do some damage perhaps to these SCVs. Does damage a lot of those SCVs, and now the Zerlings coming to clean up a majority of these Marines. As you guys can see, the hit points in these Marines are fairly low, and these SCVs have been taken out, He's losing so many workers at this point. 14 in total kill, but he does rewall, and that is the key. Rewalling does allow him to hold off this attack a little bit longer, but What's stopping Cezanne from continuing to produce Banelings and going for another attack? And Snare has not made a bunker. He does have, he has lost a lot of mining time, even having a few more Zerlings in here, killing SCVs. Right now, the worker count is 34 to 33 with Cezanne slightly in the lead, making seven Banelings now to continue this aggression, but Snare has not made a bunker. He does have a decent amount of Marines though, and this time, this attack is not going to be as successful unless Cezanne hits this Baneling attack just right. There is a medevac out as well to help this. Here comes the attack now, the depots fall, and the Banelings rushing in, but they're immediately targeted down by Ensnare, and in fact, with that medevac out, he's gonna be able to push this back really easily. We'll probably repair this barracks in no time, and even though Cezanne is up in supply, he's making 22 more Zerlings, and with the worker count not as different as it could have been at this point, with another command center out for Ensnare, and Ensnare is not in too bad of a shape at all. He's got double medevacs coming out. Blair is just now starting for Cezanne. You can see it over here in his main base. Yeah, he has a macro hatcher. Yeah, he's getting that evolution chamber, but look at this. Cezanne is not researching upgrades yet because that evolution chamber isn't out. He's got plus one on the way. So there's got plus one on the way. He's making four marines at a time, keeping those medevacs out. He's about to have siege tanks. And he's just going to continue to put pressure on, and he is, Cezanne is just way behind in tech. Cezanne is, uh, he committed way too much to the Zerling attack. He's got 32 Speedlings out right now and 44 Banelings. What is he going to do with those? Not a whole lot. There's really not a lot, and Snare can do it, or I keep saying the names backwards for whatever reason. I just <laughs> consider these players so similar because uh, they're two players who have never been very good, but it stuck around Code S for a while and, you know, fell down and might actually fall out of the way of all the way out of Code A. I guess that's how my brain works. If the players have similar uh, <laughs> results, I just mix up their names all the time. Plus one melee on the way now. Forest is on, getting two more extractors at his backdoor expansion here. And Ensnare actually sent his medevacs here, so they're spotted, so... Cezanne knows this is coming, he's going to want to make a few more Banelings here because if he tries to use just Zerglings, these Marines are going to way out-destroy them with their extra DPS with the stem and with these Medivacs here to kill him, it's going to be no problem for them. Cleaning up a ton of creep here, I'd love to see Ensnare just kill some more creep and then go home. Right now, you see that Cezanne is destroying these rocks, preparing to take a possible fourth. He's not going to be able to take it right now, he knows he doesn't have the right amount of units, he doesn't have the right amount of tech. He is powering up drones though to get ready for that, he's got 15 drones on the way, he's got Baneling Speed, Burrow, and Aspire all on the way right now. Second factory smartly going up for Ensnare right now, adding a few more barracks, continuing that medevac production. Does not yet have Siege Mode on the way, I think is a bit of an oversight by him, probably a bit of a mistake. Should have Siege Mode on the way by now, because he's got two tanks. Would have actually unlocked a timing for him to push right now if he had started Siege Mode. But instead he's going to try to come over here, catch a possible base, and in fact he sees these Zerglings, decides to stem. Sure, he's got Metamax, I'll just stem, clean up those Zerglings, no problem. Right now, Cezanne's slowly trying to spread that creep out, back out. Remember, he made so many Zerlings early on, and he saw that attack coming, so he made a ton extra. In fact, in total right now, he has 72 Zerlings out. So he has a lot of Zerlings. He needs to do something with those. You know, he's got to control the map with them. He needs to get out here, take this watchtower. He needs to come over here, maybe put some Baneling aggression on here, to at least scout, see what's going on, because right now, he's got a ton of Zerlings he's not doing a whole lot with. I'll give you guys some more unit numbers. You guys can see them here on the screen. 24. Marines out, three siege tanks and six medevacs, 69 zerglings and four banelings out for a zerg player, and 68 drones to 55 SCVs. And uh, as a few more just popped, it went up to 72 there. A really good economy for Cezanne on three base, but with the mules and snares dropping, you guys can take a look at the economy. I mean, it's fairly similar at this point. Minerals wise, it's about 2100 per minute for both these guys. Gas, of course, the same uh, in snare needs to take this final gas to really catch up and make that 100% even. But these guys are fairly similar economies right now. Now, Cezanne has started some Mulus production. He's got five Mutas out. He's got nine more on the way. He's getting plus two melee weapons. He's getting plus one Carabas and that plus one flyer attacks right now. And Snare bunkering up like crazy with a ton of depots here. 
pretty full wall off. No Zergling run buys are going to occur here, at least not with Baneling supporting them. Now, Sazan is finally taking that fourth base. He took it fairly safely, and Snare does have a dropship full of Marines here, though, and he may, of course, spot this and probably will drop that as soon as he sees an attack move out here. As soon as the army of Sazan is out of position, and Snare will drop that. Now, right now, four Banelings moving up here. He is going to use that Burrow because he has that. He also has a Zergling to spot these units where they are. He's going to use these Mutas to try to bait the Marines into these Baneling landmines, and it may actually happen. Oh, close call there. Four and Snare almost walking into a trap. Now, as you guys can see, the supply gap slowly going in the favor of Sazan right now. But remember, and Snare has a very strong army. He's got five siege tanks here. His upgrades are just at plus one, but he does have plus one armor on the way and plus two. So they're going to have very similar upgrades at this point. Plus one flyer weapons finishing up very quickly here for Sazan. A little drop canceled this hatchery over here, that drop I was mentioning earlier. And oh, look at that. Baneling Bomb killed so many. And this is actually going to force... More scans for Ensnare. Each scan he uses makes him waste approximately 270 minerals. That's about as much as you get out of a mule. Now back in the main bases of Ensnare, you can see he's powered up tons of barracks. He's creating Thors and Siege Tanks still at this point. A Ghost Academy on the way. A little bit early of a Ghost Academy, but you get that Ghost Academy out. You start building up that Ghost Energy. It's okay. A huge army of Sazan may try to catch the smaller, weakened army of Ensnare. And in fact, he's just going to run in here and attack. He may have enough. The Marines retreat, it looks like he absolutely has enough. He's actually going to run through here while these depots are lowered. Mute is doing a ton of damage, and Ensnare actually could be finished off here. There are a decent amount of Marines left. He's actually just going to go ahead and engage this bunker because he has so many Zerlings. And yeah, I think this is actually just the end for Ensnare. He tried to push out. His opponent caught a ton of his Marines with those Banelings, and that unlocked the timing. And Sazan said, you know what, I'm going to use this. And use it, he has, because he has ended this game. GGO from Ensnare. And that is that Sazan taking game one here. Really well played. He was able to get those upgrades out fairly quickly and keep up with his opponent in that regard. He put a lot of pressure on in the early game. Didn't kill a ton. It was a fairly even exchange, but he lost a lot of control of the map. Even so, though, he kept a decent amount of Zerglings. And with those Zerglings, uh, he was able to scout, he was able to make sure at all times, okay, I'm not going to die to an attack. And Snare kept wanting to do these timing attacks, but every time he scanned, he killed some creep, but he couldn't really push in all the way, there were too many Zerglings. So Sazan, you know, he had a lot of Zerglings he couldn't really use offensively, but he used that opportunity. Once he had the huge Zergling count, he went for drones. He droned up quite heavily and was able to get his economy up. So we have loaded up our second map, it is going to be Taldarim Altar. And Snare, probably a little bit stressed out after that loss, but Sazan didn't look extremely solid in that game. In fact, going for such an aggressive strategy early on shows a little bit of a lack of confidence from Sazan. But the countdown has started, and Snare, can he tie it up, or will Sazan close it out 2-0? Let's find out here at the GSL Round 1 of Code A.